All right. So moving on, um, we have two questions combined. The asker of the first question, uh, we are not saying his name on the air due to profanity, because that's something we clearly care about on this podcast. Uh, But the question is, is fasted training, and in parentheses, weightlifting, ever beneficial? The second question here is from Nick. Um, Nick says, I train at 5 a.m. and take a protein shake prior to training. Anything else, or would you recommend anything else uh, to do or eat before working out in a fasted state? Yeah, so I should clarify the uh, the first name was, it was just very low humor, very uh, toilet humor name, horrible stuff. I, I would have been more likely to include genuine profanity than that. Um, and what you're going to see with my questions for this episode is they're, they're kind of linked. I tried to ar- arrange them in like a step-by-step way because a lot of people had very similar overlapping questions. So let's get started. Is fasted weightlifting ever beneficial? Um, we've talked about this before, so I don't want to reiterate points we've made many times before. You could make an argument uh, in some context that you would want to do potentially some low glycogen training or you know, do a training about when your glycogen storage is low. But that's going to have a lot more carryover to endurance type exercise in terms of the adaptations we're trying to promote with low glycogen training. And it's important to note that low glycogen training does not mean fasted training necessarily. You could do it in a fasted state. That would be one way to induce low glycogen, but uh, they're not necessarily the same thing because honestly, if you had an enormous carbohydrate meal before bed and then you woke up and, and worked out in a fasted state, your glycogen still probably is not quite depleted. So There are some instances for endurance type athletes of doing some low glycogen training specifically. Um, I fail to see much of a crossover that would justify that type of training strategy for someone who's purely interested in more lifting related training. So if if your goals are strength and hypertrophy, um, the question then becomes, can you get away with fasted training? Not would there be a benefit of, of necessarily intentionally doing it? Um, It's not better to do fasted weightlifting, uh, but there are a lot of people who need to train very early in the morning. And for them, sometimes there's a dilemma where if I try to get a meal in, I either have to wake up way earlier than I want to, or I have to eat in very close proximity to my workout, and then my stomach hurts during my workout, and that actually impairs my performance. So that's kind of the rare circumstance where if if the binary decision is I train fasted or I have a whole meal... And the whole meal makes me so sick I can't perform well. In that instance, it might make sense to go fasted, but I think there's a comfortable middle ground that you can achieve. And that leads me to question two of this kind of question pairing. You know, I wake up at 5 a.m. Obviously, I'm not going to say, well, why don't you wake up at 3.30, make a nice meal, let it digest, and then 90 minutes later, you can go to the gym. People aren't going to do that. Um, so what can what can you do to try to get some decent pre-workout nutrition in that scenario. Uh, What else would you have besides a protein shake? So um, on the supplement side of things, there are a couple pre-workout things that might be helpful. Generally speaking, this isn't uh, specific to people training in the fasted state. But, uh, you know, if you can get a, a little caffeine dose in maybe 30 to 60 minutes before, you know, the brunt of your workout, that can give you a little boost. Uh, citrulline malate is usually consumed about 60 minutes pre. So if you just have a little caffeine and citrulline right upon waking, by the time you get to the gym and you're really in the groove, you know, you've, you've probably got, it's probably in your system enough, uh, to, to do something for you. Now, the question was, if I have a protein shake, you know, what else can I do there? Um, before I get into other things, a protein shake is an excellent way to try to get some nutrition in. Uh, that theoretically will be kind of easy to digest. And the reason we would want some kind of a, some kind of protein or amino acids beforehand is so that, you know, immediately after the workout, you've got some amino acids in the bloodstream that can start helping you build some muscle. Now, some people, if they have protein, even if it's a protein shake before training, it can be a little harsh on their stomach and, and it, they struggle to digest it while they're working out. So if that's you, there's a few options uh, on the table. You might find that a hydrolyzed version of protein is a little easier for you than a whole protein. Uh, They they basically 
hydrolyze some of those peptide bonds. It makes it a little bit more digestible. Uh, you could take it a step further and go with an essential amino acid mixture, which I would say is probably the second best option. And then the third best option, which is better than nothing, but probably not ideal, would be would be to go with like a branched chain amino acid mixture. So that's how I would kind of rank your protein options. So now outside of protein, what would you want to do? Um, I do think it's a decent idea as long as you can afford the calories uh, to get some amount of carbohydrate in that pre-training meal. For most people, I say minimum of like 20 to 40-ish grams of carbs, depending on your body size. And then obviously, depending on what exactly you're doing. If you're going for a three-hour run, it, it, it's going to be more than that. But if you're going in for a 60-minute bodybuilding workout, you can probably get away with 20 to 40 grams, depending on body size. Um, it is interesting when you look at the pre-exercise uh, carbohydrate literature, there are a couple really interesting things uh, to at least at least mention. So there's some research showing that even a glucose mouth rinse has improved some aspects of performance. And most of those studies are looking at uh, moderate to higher intensity endurance type training for the most part. And there, there are some mixed results. Some studies show a benefit, some studies show no benefit. But it is an interesting thing that likely, currently the, the, uh, the line of thinking is that there's some kind of central mechanism that you have receptors in the oral cavity that can sense that glucose and they trigger parts of the brain associated with like motivation and reward and that that uh, has a central effect on on allowing you to perform better in exercise there there are studies though that fail to show that um i know um Tromelin, how does he say his his first name i think it's yorn yorn so he he actually sent me a copy of his dissertation uh recently and i haven't read through the whole thing cuz it, it's kind of long I, I feel like he put a lot of work into it if i'm being honest is really good though. It's really no, good. it's it's exceptional. Yeah, really, really good work. Um, but one of his studies was on a glucose mouth rinse, and, and they found no benefit either in the fasted or the fed state, if I recall correctly. But in any case, it's an interesting thing about pre-workout carbohydrate considerations. The other interesting consideration is something called rebound hypoglycemia. And this is something that I believe the initial studies that got big were done in the 70s. And what they found was they gave people... Uh, this pre-workout carbohydrate about 45 to 60 minutes before the onset of exercise. And what happened was, you know, this high carbohydrate meal, they would have blood glucose and insulin initially go up. And then they would initiate this exercise about 45 to 60 minutes later, and they would still have high blood levels of insulin. But then because of all their muscle activity, there'd be an initial drop in glucose in the blood. And what would happen was they would experience hypoglycemic symptoms and actually perform worse. But we've done a lot, a lot more research on that concept since, and it seems to vary substantially from person to person. Some people are, are a little bit sensitive to this hypoglycemic effect at the onset of exercise. Some people really don't seem to experience it much at all. And generally speaking, the studies looking at pre-workout carb uh, feeding, I was going to say supplementation, but it's not necessarily supplementation. But this pre-exercise carb feeding generally either has a positive or a neutral effect on performance across a, a wide range of exercise modalities and tasks. Um, but if you if you do seem to get some hypoglycemic symptoms, if you have a high carb meal in the meal prior to training, there are some strategies that you can use to combat that. And the two strategies that most people talk about, especially um, Asker Yukendrup, I think that's how he says the last name, but I have no idea. Um, but he's like, he, he's a really, really good sport nutrition researcher who, who does more in the endurance realm and does a lot with carbohydrate. Um, his two strategies he, he tends to promote the most, it seems, are go with a lower GI carb. Uh, and potentially even do it in like a mixed meal to kind of make it a smoother, um, gradual rise in blood glucose and the insulin response. Or you can shift that carbohydrate intake closer to the workout, and that seems to do the trick as well. So those are considerations to keep in mind with that pre-workout meal. And finally, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is dietary fat. Um, with dietary fat... A lot of times, because fat digests so slowly, 
a lot of people, if they have a really high fat meal before their workouts, um, the digestion is just too much for their stomach to handle. Uh, their stomach hurts. They get nauseous during training. They perform really poorly. So if, if we're talking about a meal being consumed within that hour before training, I usually tell people to keep the fat to a minimum. Um, I'm really sensitive to that. One time I had back in my powerlifting days, I had a huge meal of like, uh, like I went to a restaurant that had like, uh, Buffalo wings, which are like just remarkably fatty. And then I tried to do like a high rep squat work. I think I was doing small lot at the time. Oh God. I think, I think I had like a million sets of nine that day or something. And uh, I just felt really bad. It, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> so, so don't do that. Uh, some people are, are totally fine with it, but I would say the average, uh, the average stomach tends to be a little sensitive to that uh, immediately prior to the workout. So like I said, you know, there are some, some specific instances where a person might say, based on when I have to wake up, based on how my stomach reacts to having any food in there, I'm just going to have to go fasted. And it's, it's not at all like, oh, well, sorry, you wasted your workout. You can still do a fine workout with fasted training. Um, I don't think it's the purely optimal way to go about it. But there are certain cases where it beats the alternative of feeling sick your whole workout and performing poorly. But I think generally speaking, there are ways you can accommodate that, that pre-exercise uh, opportunity for nutrient intake to get you a slightly better outcome than, than training fasted. No, I, I agree. And one thing that I would add is like, even if you don't have the time or desire to eat something before your workout, I mean, during your workout itself, you could just sip along on Gatorade instead of water. And Absolutely. Like, yeah. And like that, that would still do something for you, especially like if energy levels are potentially an issue. Yeah. Uh, during the workout, you could go with, I mean, any kind of sports beverage is going to be, um, you know, it's typically a five to 8% carbohydrate solution, generally speaking. And yeah, if you want to, you could even put some, uh, some essential amino acids in there, some branch chain amino acids. Um, even some people like to put in hydrolyzed protein during the workout. So, so that, that's definitely another, another good option.